let's see about proptosis proptosis is defined as forward displacement of the eyeball beyond the line joining the superior and the inferior orbital margins classification of proptosis proptosis can be unilateral bilateral acute intermittent or pulsating so the classification is unilateral proptosis bilateral proptosis acute proptosis intermittent proptosis and pulsating proptosis causes of unilateral proptosis the causes include congenital causes like dermoid cyst congenital cystic eyeball and orbital teratoma traumatic lesions like orbital hemorrhage retained intraorbital foreign body traumatic aneurysm and emphysema of the orbit inflammatory lesions like orbital cellulitis orbital abscess and thrombophlebitis cysts of the orbit tumors of the orbit mucosal of the paranasal sinus and systemic diseases like thyroid eye disease and leukemia also paralysis of the extraocular muscles can all these leads to unilateral proptosis next the causes of bilateral proptosis which include developmental anomalies like oxycephaly osteopathies like rickets and acromegaly inflammatory conditions include syndromes like mikulic syndrome endocrinal exophthalmos tumors and systemic diseases like histocytosis xanthomatosis and wedgner's granulomatosis all these are the causes of bilateral proptosis next coming to the causes of acute proptosis which include orbital emphysema fracture of the medial orbital wall orbital hemorrhage and rupture of ethmoidal mucosae next the causes of intermittent proptosis so the causes include orbital varics which is a venous disorder periodic orbital edema orbital hemorrhage and highly vascular tumors out of which the most important cause is orbital varics then the causes of pulsatile proptosis which are vascular disorders like keratico cavernous fistula and sacular aneurysm investigation of proptosis first history taking a detailed history should be taken followed by local examination local examination includes inspection to differentiate between proptosis and pseudo proptosis and to see if it is unilateral or bilateral and to know if it is axial proptosis or eccentric proptosis next is palpation if there is increased resistance on palpation it indicates there is a solid tumor present and if there is increased compressibility of the proptosis then it indicates that there is a soft vascular tumor next we auscultate to see for abnormal vascular communications if there is presence of keratico cavernous fistula we can hear generalized brute next on trans elimination the trans elimination is positive if there is any anterior orbital lesion then we test for visual acuity pupillary reaction there will be marcus gun pupil because of optic nerve compression and on fundoscopy there could be venous engorgement optic disc edema and optic atrophy next we check for ocular motility and we do exophthalmometry by using ludi's exophthalmometer or hertel's exophthalmometer out of which the hertel's exophthalmometer is most commonly used in this we measure the amount of exophthalmos present then perimetry to detect the optic nerve function after this we perform systemic examination to see if there is any systemic syndrome associated or if there is any endocrine abnormalities next we do lab investigations which include pyroid function test total leukocyte count differential leukocyte count erythrocyte sedimentation rate and vdrl for syphilis all these are blood investigations then we do cassonese test to detect the presence of hydatid cyst and we also do stool examination and urine analysis to check for any parasites 
Then comes the imaging techniques which can be non-invasive or invasive. The non-invasive techniques are plain x-rays, we use Caldwell's view or Waters view, CT scan, ultrasound, MRI and MR angiography. Invasive investigations include orbital venography, carotid angiography and radioisotope arteriography. These can detect the vascular diseases. And also we do histopathological studies like FNAC, fine needle aspiration cytology or we do biopsies which can be of two types, incisional biopsy and excisional biopsy. Excisional biopsy is preferred for any encapsulated lesions. And lastly the treatment, <coughs> treatment is that of treating the underlying cause. So whichever cause is leading to proptosis, we should treat that underlying cause. That is all about proptosis. Thank you.